Have you ever wanted to create your very own portfolio website to showcase your data science projects? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today I'm going to show you how you could do that using the Streamlit library in Python. And if you're feeling like it, you could also expand upon this web application in order to make it interactive, add input widgets to it, and do some processing based on the user input. And so if this sounds like fun, then you want to watch this video till the end. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to fire up your working environment. And so what I have now is the VS Code, and I'm currently in the folder resume. And you'll notice here that I have a total of three files here. So the first one being the app.py file, which is shown here on the left-hand side, and the dp.png, which is my image photo. And you could replace this with your own. And you could make it square or you could make it as a circle. So whichever shape that is resonated with you. And I have a style.css file, which will essentially be doing some customization of the CSS styling here. So as you can see, we haven't really modified it extensively, so only a few modifications. And so let's get back to the app.py. All right, so let's run the Streamlit app and I'll type in Streamlit run app.py, enter. All right, and so this is the app that we have created. And so at the top left-hand side here, this is my name. And then you have a navigation bar. So if you would like for more information on how I developed this customized top navigation bar, you want to check the video that I'll provide the link in the video description or also in the top-hand corner here. And so this resume website or curriculum vitae website or CV is conveniently developed using Streamlit. And so Aside from the navigation bar, you could put in your name here, and then I typed in resume, but you could change it to curriculum vitae if you like. And then I have a summary box, which will summarize the key points about my resume or CV. And so as an educator, as a researcher, as an administrator with 20 years experience, and then having participated at various conferences as well as published in research articles and some of the key performance index or KPI in the field of research. And so as you see here, when I scroll down, you'll notice that we have the headings with the link here. So let me move this. You'll notice that we have a link here. At the bottom left-hand side, you'll see the hash symbol education. So that's the location of this particular heading. So when we click here, we're going to the heading of the education. If we click on work experience, we'll hop there. If you click on bioinformatics tools, then we'll hop there as well. Or social media. So let's click on home and then we'll refresh the page. And so this is my education information. So you replace it with your own. So I've highlighted some of the numbers here, like the GPA I highlighted here, the research thesis title I also highlighted here as well um, and also other numbers as well work experiences so all of the KPIs I've highlighted in the colors that you see here I'll show you how I did that and so all of these are created purely in Markdown and Streamlit so all of the formatting is in Markdown and the app was developed in Streamlit so I had links to my data professor YouTube channel, also my second channel, coding professor, and also to my blog website as well on Medium. So actually the number has already updated to about 4,100 subscribers on Medium. Actually this is Medium. So we'll make modifications to it in just a moment. And then we have the various bioinformatic tools that my research group has developed over the years. And then some of the skill sets that I currently use, Python, R, Linux, data processing, etc. Social media, so all of the links to all of the social media websites, IDs. And so that's about it for the web app. And so let me show you a line by line explanation of the code. Okay, let me resize this as well. I'll minimize this window. All right. So. So you see here that we're not using any other libraries aside from Streamlit and also the PIL library. 
And so Streamlit will be used to create this resume web app and we'll also be using the PIL image function to display the image here. And so let me, sorry. All right, and so here we've imported from PIL, import image, and then we load in the CSS file, which I've shown you earlier on. So I could show you again right here, CSS file, which is here. So the UL here is to bullet points. So I made sure to have extra padding to the left. And then H1 and H5 is here. This is H1. Let's see, did I use H5? I think I used it somewhere. I have to look again. And the image, I have made sure to add some margin to the left, which is here, especially for the image so that it will be almost centered. Okay, let's head back. All right, and so here I've commented various portions of the web app. So here we have the header. So the header or the top part here. So we've written using the st.write function, my name here as a h1 heading. Oh, right here, this is the h5. So we have five hash symbols here. So it's here, resume. So this is the h5 that I mentioned to you about, and this is h1. So we're using markdown syntax here. So h1 and h5. And then we've inserted the image and then we've resized it to a width of 150 pixels right here. And then we've used the st.markdown to add the summary as the h2 right here. And then we've used st.info in order to display it as a blue box right here. You could also change the colors to other, like for example, if you want it in red or pink, it'll be like that. But red color looks like it's an error, so I'll use the info. Okay, I like blue. So in Markdown, you have the bullet points specified by using the dash or the hyphen. And then the three bullet points here are displayed to the right here. And then let's move down. Navigation. So this is for the navigation bar that you see. So because this is more or less like a bootstrap web app. So if you expand, the navigation bar will expand with the text here. But if you compress the window of the web app, then it collapsed into this minimized version. So the top navigation bar is used here on lines 27 until 55. So in this section here, navigation. Okay, so here are some custom function for printing out the text that we are using in this web app. So I've created txt function, txt2, txt3, txt4, and we'll notice that we did a little of formatting here. So we use four columns, st.columns, 4, 1, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 2. So these are more or less like the, the size. So we have like a very wide first column, and then we have a very thin second column. So it's the aspect dimension. So four out of five would be the width of this particular uh, column, column one, and column two will be uh, about one and a fifth. And so that is corresponding to about 80% of the width of the column and 20% of the width of the column. And so we'll see later where we've used TXT function. So these are used for formatting the columns. And so you can see here that TXT, TXT2, TXT3 has two columns. TXT4 has three columns. And then we've used markdown and also F string to format the text. We'll see later where we use that. Let's scroll down. So we've used st.markdown to specify using H2 heading, the education section, as you see here. And so here you go, we use the txt function to display the information here. So the first column would be here. This is about 80% of the column's width. And then this is about 20% of the column's width. And so you could see that we've used two input text. Let me expand this. So this is the first input. And we have a comma, and then the second input is here. So contents for the first input will go into the first column. Content for the second input will go into the second column, which is right here. First column, and then second column. So the txt function accepts two input A and B. So A is right here, and then, I'm sorry, A is right here, and then B is the year. Okay, let me show you here. So A is here, Doctor of Philosophy in Thailand. 
and then B will be here, 2002 into 2006. And then the rest here in bullet points were specified in markdown function. So dash or hyphen are for the bullet points. And then as you notice here, I've highlighted the numbers and also the text here of the title and various other KPIs. So I've used the tick symbol before and after the values or words or sentences that I would like to highlight. Like here, I also use the tick symbol here before and after, at the beginning and at the end. Here as well, first, okay, and then here, Bachelors of Science, I've also used TXT function. Let's move down. Work experience using markdown H2 heading and then TXT function was used for specifying the, the job position and the affiliation and also the year. And then more bullet points are in markdown. So more positions are in the TXT function. Also the co-chair, content creator, technical writer are using the txt function. So I mentioned earlier that the number has updated to about 4,100 on medium. So I'll just add a plus here. So the channel has already crossed 100,000 and the second channel has already crossed 3,000 subscribers. Let me check one moment. All right, so we have 261 videos and let's see, second channel. Yeah, so more than 3,200 and we have 38 videos. So, and as you can see here, we could easily update the information in your resume app just by modifying the values here and then you have an updated web app of your resume. And so we have 68 published blogs on Medium, all right. And so here are some of the bioinformatics tools, which we've used H2 heading and then, all right, here you go. We are formatting it as three columns. So we have txt4 function. And so we're using three inputs, the name of the web server or the tool, the description of it is the second input, and then the URL is the third input. And so as you can see, the name of the tool, we've specified that we wanted it to be in the formatting here. So we've used the tick to format the text here. Scroll down, the skill sets. So we have two columns, but then what we did differently from the txt function was that we've highlighted the skill sets. You can see here the tools or the languages using the tick, and then it will accept multiple inputs specified here. So these are the skill sets using the txt3 function. And then social media we've used txt2 function for highlighting the name of the various social platform. And then we have the URL and that's about it. So all of this in about 216 lines of code. And you could deploy this on Streamlit Cloud. So you could simply save this, upload this to your GitHub account, and then log in to your Streamlit Cloud account. And then you specify the GitHub repo URL. And then in just a few clicks, you'll be able to deploy the resume web app to the cloud. And then you could share that URL. And so I'll be providing the example demo link to this particular resume web app. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. And so if you're watching this far, then please drop a fire emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And please also smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on notifications for being updated on the latest videos. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.